Uh, good evening, everyone. There is a mystery about intelligence. Uh, what makes us human, human is, is really the ability to think and to plan. But intelligence is uh, a shared ability among uh, humans and animals, and now perhaps even machines. I'm an engineer and a scientist, and I've always been fascinated by the question of intelligence. And what, I, what I'm working on is trying to figure out really what is essential to intelligence so that we can reproduce it in machine, but not just to construct widgets, but also to understand uh, human intelligence by really focusing on what is, what is essential. So AI these days, we, we hear a lot about AI. We've, we've been hearing uh, about it over the last 10 years or so, uh, a lot more than in previous decades. And the reason is because we've discovered ways to, for machines to become intelligent by, or vaguely intelligent, by training themselves as opposed to being programmed. So AI now has become synonymous with machine learning. And so the ability to reproduce learning abilities in machine is really what uh, brought about big progress. Um, because building AI systems by hand through sheer engineering is just too difficult. We don't know how to do it. Uh, so what's, uh, what's happened is that we've uh, got inspiration from the brain and basically built computer models of, uh, you know, conceptual computer models of how the brain works and or how the brain learns. The brain is composed of billions of, of neurons, brain cells that are in interconnected with each other. And learning takes place by modifying those connections um, as we have uh, new experiences. So people have thought since the, the, the 50s um, about uh, ways to do this with machines, but it's become really successful only in the last 10 years or so. We've seen a lot of success in things like speech recognition and image understanding, uh, text understanding, and open the, the door to applications like uh, as, uh, driving assistance systems, uh, medical image analysis systems, content filtering systems, tr translation, automatic translation, which kind of works now. So a lot of applications. Um, in fact, if today you, you took uh, the, the modern versions of AI out of companies like Facebook and Google, both companies will crumble. They are entirely built around it these days. So it's a lot of success, but still the limitations of those uh, systems are, 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 are very uh, dire in the sense that our machines do not learn nearly as well as humans and animals. So there is a, a big piece of human intelligence and learning that we have not discovered and we're not able to reproduce with machines. And this is what stops machines from being able to learn like a baby, learn how the world works by observation um, and acquire some amount of common sense if you want on, on how the world works. So uh, the joke I often say is that uh, the most intelligent machines that we have today, even though they can beat us at chess and go and, uh, and do amazing things, they have less common sense than a house cat. And we just don't know the principles uh, upon which to base uh, an AI system so that it will acquire this type of intelligence. So this is the, the, the challenge of the, of the next few years, um, essentially. And then there's the big question is, uh, the kind of intelligence we observe in machines now that, that we, we create in machines is, is sort of very reactive. We train machines for a particular task and they can be very good at this particular task, in fact, better than humans sometimes. But you modify the task a little bit and you know, they don't work very well. And they, they tend to be very, very, very specialized. So the big question is, how do we build machines that have some sort of autonomous intelligence, uh, a bit like humans and, 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 and many animals? Um, so we don't specify what the machine should do. We just specify an objective and the machine figures out how to fulfill this objective. This is another topic of research and uh, we're only beginning. And so it's gonna take a long time before we discover those principles so that we can have you know, household robots and virtual assistants that we can talk to and, and you know, they can answer any question and help us in our daily lives. Uh, and uh, the, the, a lot of progress are being, are being done, but it's still uh, very primitive at the moment. So it's only the beginning.